wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat unusual mystery uncovered by the James Webb Space Telescope when he took a look at the Orion Nebula sometimes in 2023. We've actually discussed these discoveries in some of the previous videos in the description, but basically in these absolutely incredible images, something really bizarre and something very unexpected was discovered almost right away. And you can see these unusual discoveries right here. Today these are known as jumbos, Jupiter mass binary objects that for some unknown reason were all over the place inside the Orion Nebula. And this particular observation from the Orion was already quite surprising. And surprising because of a discovery of hundreds of different free-floating planets, or FFPs, that were actually hiding inside the nebula this whole time. Now some of the original FFPs, which we also sometimes call rogue planets, were first found by the infrared telescopes approximately 20 years ago. But because since then the telescopes improved dramatically, researchers discovered hundreds more. And so here we basically are talking about planets which don't actually have a parent star and may even have their own mini planets or I guess mini moons forming their own individual systems. As a matter of fact, we got so good at detecting them that recently, just a few months ago, even the TESS telescope that was actually never designed to discover these planets found one by accident. Here this was a result of a gravitational lensing effect as one of these objects, approximately the same mass as planet Earth, passed in front of a distant star. And so basically tons of these rogue planets have now been discovered and many of them are still mysterious, with the biggest mystery being their origin. We don't really understand how exactly they form. But last year, in this study you can find in a description, James Webb was able to discover approximately 500 such objects hiding inside the trapezium cluster in the Orion Nebula. But out of these 500 objects, 42 came as pairs. And all of these pairs were very similar and super bizarre. They were between 0.7 and 13 times the mass of Jupiter, with all of them forming an unusual binary. So basically here we had 84 objects, that formed 42 individual binaries. But we've never seen anything like this before and this had absolutely no explanation. As a matter of fact, the simulation I usually use for a lot of videos, Space Engine, basically added all of these objects almost right away just because this was such a bizarre and such an unusual discovery. You can actually see some of these objects right here and you can then travel there just to see what they kind of look like as visualized by this simulator. Although because many of these objects are relatively massive, they're also probably going to be somewhat hot. As a matter of fact, so hot that they're easily visible in the infrared. And though initially researchers thought that maybe these are basically kind of like brown dwarfs that we've seen before, turns out that they're not. They actually seem to be completely different objects we've never seen before, as recently proven through another observation. Here by using a radio telescope, and specifically the Very Large Array, astronomers focused on one of these objects, Jumbo 24, discovering that it's also very bright in radio light. In other words, unlike your typical brown dwarf, or I guess unlike a typical planet, these objects were also emitting a lot of radio light for reasons unknown. And the radio light coming from these objects was much much higher than anything from a brown dwarf or from a typical planet. And so this somewhat bizarre observation raised a lot of questions about their origin or even what these objects are. Specifically here, there was even a kind of a correlation between the infrared brightness and the brightness in radio light, with researchers confirming that this relationship is extremely unlikely to exist completely by chance. And the overall conclusion from the study in the description basically being we need more observations and more analysis to try to figure out why we see these objects in radio waves. And so here to explain these objects, we only had two potential scenarios. One scenario is that these used to be planets or maybe brown dwarfs present in larger star systems and eventually, because there are so many stars around the system, some of the neighboring stars might have kicked them out of the system, basically turning them into rogue planets or individual planetary systems. But the other scenario was a little bit different. Maybe these objects were born this way and collapsed directly from primordial gas but just did not have enough mass to form stars. And because we know many different stars are usually formed as binary objects, it would explain why we have 42 binary rogue planets. But basically for the past year and a half, researchers have been trying to figure out how exactly could they form. And one of the initial studies basically revealed that if these objects were actually captured from a different star system and were previously planets orbiting around those stars, statistically it would not make sense that they would be binary objects. 
In other words, it's extremely unlikely that binary systems would be physically captured from a typical star. And so here, by running thousands of simulations, usually involving different planets and different stars with a lot of massive neighbors, all of the calculations suggested an extremely low probability, less than 1%, that a pair of planets would be kicked out out of a star system. And in those cases where they did get kicked out, those planets would only be about up to four times as massive as Jupiter and would have to be neighboring planets at first. But these jumbos are way more massive on average, which actually would be difficult to explain. In contrast, it was relatively easy to lose a single planet, so some of these single rogue planets could be explained this way. Basically, a stellar flyby can technically create a rogue planet, just maybe not a binary planet. And the conclusion from this initial study was that it looks like the origin of these objects might be a collapse after all. So basically they collapsed from some kind of a gas, turning into individual binary objects. But the question here was, why are they actually so small? And why have we not actually seen these binary objects ever before? And well, this is where we get this new study that potentially explains it through a slightly different approach. And so in this most recent study, Jessica Diamond and Richard Parker potentially explain this using a slightly different phenomenon, a phenomenon known as photoerosion. And the idea here is really simple. Basically, we do start with a lot of gas collapsing into various objects. Some of them are going to be binary stars, and some of them are going to be really massive stars, spewing out huge amounts of gas and even producing huge stellar emissions. Here's actually one of the simulations, known as the Starforge collaboration, showing us how we usually think this happens. And we know that in the Orion Nebula, there are a lot of these really powerful stars, so-called OB stars. Very, very hot, very massive stars, but usually with relatively short lives, that produce enormous emissions, ionizing a lot of nearby gas, and even creating what's known as the Stromgren sphere around themselves. Stromgren sphere refers to the unusual spherical object containing ionized hydrogen, very often present around young stars. One of the best examples is the Rosetta Nebula, but many different really hot stars around us will actually produce these as well. And so in this study, researchers basically investigated what happens to various objects, specifically binary objects, as they collapse close to these OB stars. And turns out that the radiation from massive OB stars can dramatically inhibit star formation by blasting enormous amount of radiation and stripping away huge amounts of gas from the outer layers of these newly formed jumbos. And so this process of photoerosion could actually be directly responsible for why these objects end up really small. They were supposed to be large stars, but they were basically born next to a buoy. A super hot, super powerful star that strips everything from the vicinity, leaving only small binary objects behind. And this would actually explain why we have so many unusual small binary objects, and even why they seem to possess unusual emissions we don't normally see from planets. Basically, these were really supposed to be stars, but they just didn't succeed. So yeah, failed stars by definition. With the only thing missing in this explanation being the difference between these objects and brown dwarfs. Because here the radio emissions still don't really make sense. But right now this is still the best possible explanation we have for why these exist. And here the researchers even provide exact mapping showing us ionized regions around six massive stars in this location, where many of these jumbos seem to be present. So basically there's a bit of a correlation between a neighboring massive star and the presence of a jumbo. But naturally this is just the first explanation, and chances are that only additional observations using radio light and more observations from the James Webb will be able to explain what's happening here. And so until these future explanations, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are some updates. Until then, check out previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.